Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's take a closer look at Pascal's principle. Essentially, it means that the pressure applied to a fluid is distributed everywhere uniformly throughout the fluid. And here's some examples where we may want to apply it. So let's say that we have um, a service station where you're trying to lift a car up. You have two pistons, one that has a cross-sectional area of 10 centimeters, one that has a cross-sectional sectional area of 1,000 square centimeters. And we're trying to figure out how much force you can apply by applying a 100 Newton force there. Because of Pascal's principle, we know that the pressure here must be the same. And so the force divided by area must be the same. Solving for F2, we realize that if you apply a force of 100 newtons, you get a force of 10,000 newtons back, which is efficient to lift a car. Another example which is kind of interesting, let's say we have a very small little tube that we fill with water. The tube has a height of 20 meters and it's attached with a little hole to the inside of a barrel. And let's say the whole barrel is filled with water as well. What will be the force on the walls of the barrel? Well, it turns out that the pressure caused by this column of water does not depend on the volume of the water, but on the height of the column. Pressure always will be rho gh. The density of water, acceleration due to gravity, the height of the column, and notice that causes a pressure of almost two atmospheres. Multiplying the pressure times the area, the surface area of the barrel wall, let's say it's one square meter, that will give you a force of 196,000 newtons, which is about 44,000 pounds. Sufficient pressure and force to probably blow the barrel apart. And we can do that by just a small amount of water in this very tall little tube. And that is how we apply Pascal's principle. So if the, if the water stops before, then what's the force on the barrel? So if you fill the tube with water, it's 20 meters high, the force on the barrel will yeah. be this much. Let's just say that it's full. You don't need to fill it anymore, so there's no height to it. What is full? The barrel is full. Yeah, the barrel is full. So what's the force on the barrel, on the wall, off the wall of the barrel? Oh, if there was no tube, if it was empty? Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's a good question. Well, then the height would be, you take the average pressure, which would be halfway through. So then instead of having 20 meters here, you may only have a half a meter there. That would be 1 40th of the force, or about 1,000 pounds of force. So once you start pouring the water in? As you start pouring, the pressure will build up and build up, and more and more force will be on the, on the walls of the barrel. Yeah, but once it's full, and you stop pouring, Oh, you don't have to pour. Once it's full, you have the full pressure right there. Just need to hide out the column. So while you're pouring, it's 4,400 pounds. 4, no, no. Pounds. As the water is rising, the pressure will increase as this number increases, right? So as the, as the water level rises, as you're pouring in the water, and the barrel's already full, and the tube, the height of the tube, the water in the tube keeps going up, by the time you're halfway up, it's already half as much. Oh, so it has nothing to do with whether the barrel's full or not. No, no, the barrel has to be full, otherwise it, you, otherwise it just keeps going in the barrel and there's no pressure applied to it. Yes. So the barrel needs to be full. Okay. Yeah. By all means. Otherwise, yeah, there's no, no pressure. Because Pascal's principle, you have this continuous fluid everywhere. So you have to have fluid in the barrel and fluid all the way up the tube. Otherwise, it doesn't work. Good question.